Recently, I spoke to a few friends of mine who happen to be aspiring entrepreneurs who are planning to launch new businesses next year and were inquiring about how to promote it on social media, but without doing so on video because they don't really like that sort of thing. I told them I had the perfect solution. Start with a podcast. Now, they were a little concerned about what all went into it, so I explained to them how Spotify for podcasters makes it simple. You can record, edit, schedule, and grow your community all from your phone or from your computer or whatever else you want to use. Plus, if they wanted to monetize it, Spotify will even go out and find them advertisers. And the craziest part is, they do all this for free. So if you're like my friends, stop wasting time, start making money today by heading over to spotify.com slash podcasters or download the Spotify for Podcasters app today. Hey guys, Kill Stokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast. In today's episode, we're gonna have a discussion on whether counter trend trading is easier or harder than trend continuation trading. Now, before we hop into today's episode, do me a favor, if you haven't done so already, leave me a rating and a review. You guys have left me so many great messages telling me how much you love the podcast, and I do appreciate it, but I would appreciate it a little bit more if you let the world know as well in the form of a review or at least a rating, five stars if you think I'm worth it. So I appreciate it in advance, and thank you. Today's episode comes from a, a series of emails that I got. And it, it's one where I thought we addressed the question, but we didn't. So I'm here again to readdress it, I guess you can say. And I want to read you the original question. It came from a trader that I'm working with. And he says, Dear Akil, I know you are more of a counter trend type trader. I personally tend uh, trend more and more in that direction as well. The main reason is that I'm starting to believe that if you want to be successful in trading, the best thing you can do is not follow the herd. The herd proves over and over again not to be very successful in the field, better following your own gut and trying to take advantage of the collective stupidness of the common retail trader, in parentheses, sorry for the strong wording. As you know, I am a systematic trader and my initial rules are more for trend following. I am now creating and testing rules for more of a counter trend perspective and I'm seeing some promising results in my back testing. Can you please elaborate a bit more on not following the herd and counter trend trading in your next podcast? And we actually uh, took this question to one of our Trader Coffee Break episodes. What I'll, what I'll try to do, you can check it out on the YouTube channel. Maybe I'll schedule it directly after this one as well. But Jason Greystone and myself, um, we run a show called the Trader Coffee Break. It's really inconsistent because our schedules get pretty busy. But what we do is we come in on Wednesdays and we have some uh, some coffee pot talk, some cooler talk. Imagine that we were in a, an actual physical office and we're just hanging out and, and chatting about some of our experiences for the days and some of the conversations that we had. And we had a really good conversation on herd mentality in general, not just specifically in, in, in trading, but in life and in, in, in other aspects as well. So again, listen to the very next podcast. I'll do my best to schedule it. Um, that way you can check it out. It's an awesome conversation that's going to make you think uh, a little bit more about where we're at and the decisions that we make and why we make those decisions. But apparently that podcast did not answer the more specific question, which was counter trend trading. And I've been speaking to this trader back and forth since. And really in the last type of conversation, the main question that the trader seems to want answered is, does counter trend trading come with greater risks since you don't know exactly if a reversal follows through or just bounces back? I was wondering which tools we have to make better decisions to go against the trend than only experience and gut feel. And I want to take us back to the very beginning because there are some underlying kind of um, myths here. And Speaking of kind of the, you know, one of the, the, the themes of the, the Trader Coffee Break was that the minority controls the majority. And we see that with a lot of messaging out there. And, and one of the messages, a, a false message, in my opinion, that is out there with trading is that the trend is your friend, right? It, it's nice. It rhymes. It's easy to say. You remember it just like look left structure leaves clues. But it's not necessarily true. Now, maybe if we're talking about a specific index in the stock market like the, the S&P, then yes, that makes sense, right? S&Ps and, 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 and you know, indexes like that, they're typically going to flow in a general direction. They're typically going to be bullish and the trend is your friend. So when in doubt, be bullish, right? But 
remember that trading is a little bit different than investing. In investing, we're looking at long-term outlooks. Trading, we're looking at more short-term moves. And if we're referring to the Forex market specifically, we have to understand that there's a completely different price movement that happens in Forex versus the stock market, right? You know, I, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. I haven't done deep research, but you know, throughout my trading career, I've always heard this, right? The stock market trends about 70% of the time. And, and that makes sense with kind of the, the old saying, bulls take the stairs, bears take the window, meaning that it takes a very long time to go up, which would be a, a upward trend. However, the, the dips, the crashes, they happen very, very quickly, right? So we do get crashes and downward movement in the stock market, but they tend to happen really quickly, really fast. And then the upward trends continue and, and they go on forever. The Forex market, however, is the exact opposite, right? The Forex market, due to the nature of the market being a, a battle, right? Um, the stock market is an individual investment. Either you're individually investing in a company, or if you're, again, if we've been using the S&P, for example, if you're investing in the S&P, you're betting on a, a basket of what should be really, really, really good companies, right? So th there's kind of this theme that everything flows in a smooth direction. In the Forex market, when we trade, what we're doing is we're not betting on individual currencies. I'm not buying the euro. I'm not buying the pound. I'm not buying the loony, right? What I'm doing is I am buying the euro versus the dollar. I am buying the pound versus the loony. I am buying this versus that, the yen versus the Australian dollar, whatever it may be, right? Forex pairs means that you are trading one versus the other and it's direct competition. And because of that, there are different kind of buying and selling habits that are created. And what we tend to see is instead of a very directional market, we actually see more of a consolidative market where the Forex market only trends about 30% of the time and it consolidates about 70% of the time. And what we mean by consolidating is, you know, it's not always kind of just like bouncing off of channels and stuff like that, but no clear directional movement, meaning, pre meaning previous levels of support and resistance instead of being broken are being held. So if, if we think about the, the overall concept in, in a quote that says, well, um, you know, counter trend trading, which is going against the trend, right, comes with greater risk. Well, a lot of that depends on what market you're in. If we're talking betting the S&P, then yeah, it, it does come with more risk. If we're talking about trading in the Forex market, then no, it actually comes with less risk, in my opinion. So we, we got to always make sure that we kind of do research on these thoughts that we're having, because there's, there's a lot of things out there. And I dealt with this a bunch during my trading career. A lot of things out there that I thought were true that were not true. Another one is like the more times the level of structure is hit, the more powerful it is. And that's completely not true. But it took me like six, seven years to learn that. So, you know, Counter trend trading, and let's take it to a different level. When I, when I think of counter trend trading and, and trend continuation trading, uh, not to get too deep in this podcast, because this can, this can go on forever and it's very hard to explain without a chart, but the idea of being against the trend isn't necessarily the way we should be thinking about it. And in general, the question that we always have to ask in traders is, what is the trend and is there ever actually a trend? We think of counter trend trading being like a salmon going the opposite way versus the flow of a river. But the thing is, right, what exactly is the trend? And the trend is going to be all relative to our perspective on the chart, meaning the exact time period range that we're looking at on a chart. It's also going to be determined by the perspective as far as like a time frame. Right. So, for example, if I'm looking at the euro dollar on a daily chart, we could be in a bullish trend. If I go down to the four hour chart, we could be in a bearish trend. I can go back down to the hourly chart and now we're in a bullish trend again. I go down to a five minute chart and once again, we're bearish. So there really is no trend. There, 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 there's only like a short term trend given our perspective, right? And when it comes to counter trend trading and trend continuation trading, I think of it less as being like a, a, a bigger term follow the trend and more like a technique. So again, it's a little bit difficult to explain without charts, but imagine price action is going up and it comes into a previous level of structure resistance, right? A trend continuation trader would be looking for that level of resistance to be broken 
that would give them a signal that price is likely to continue higher. And then depending on how that trader likes to operate, they can buy the breakout and look for an extended move higher, or they can wait for that violation, wait for a little bit of relief, a pullback, and then look to buy it on the dip, something like that. That would be two examples of how a trend continuation trader or a trend trader would operate. A counter trend trader would be the exact opposite. A counter trend trader would look to sell at that level of structure, assuming it holds, right? So think about it like this. If we know how the market moves, extensions and pullbacks, extensions and pullbacks, extensions are the bigger moves, pullbacks are the smaller moves. A trend continuation trader is looking to get involved during the extension. A counter trend trader is looking to get involved during the pullback. Now, there are pros and cons of each. Obviously, the extension is going to be bigger than the pullback. So you, you, one can say that there is more profit available in trading the extension, especially if you can capture the dip, right? The, the, if you can capture the previous retracement and buy it at the right time and ride that extension all the way up, there is a lot more opportunity to make profit there. There's also a lot more risk because, again, we're dealing with a market that only trends about 30 percent of the time. And you have to be really on point with your targets in order to project where that extension is going to end at and hope that it can get to that target profit before it reverses. Psychologically, it, it's difficult as well because the longer you stay in a trade, the more those psychological demons send the, tend to pop up and, and, and kind of tempt you into doing bad things. On the other hand, counter trend trading, this is why I initially flocked to counter trend trading, I actually found it to be easier. Right. I found it extremely easy for me to watch price action come to a previous level of structure, give me a signal that that structure is likely to hold and then look for that retracement. Because the thing that made it easier about the retracement is I wasn't holding trades for long periods of time. I was in and out. Right. I had a one cancels other order. I had a single stop loss. I had a single target. I had a very close uh, profit target location because I wasn't looking to hold the trend and let it ride. So I was looking for a very small move, kind of like a like a, a sniper where I get in, I get out and I look for the next opportunity. And that was a lot easier for me, not just because of the, the you know, the, the analysis that took place, but psychologically as well as I didn't have to kind of sit there and deal with those demons. My, my trades didn't last that that long. So, you know, to, I guess to answer to wrap things up, to answer the last part of this trader's question is um, I was wondering what tools we have to make better decisions. And the answer is there's there's no special tools or techniques for counter trend trading. There's no special tools or techniques for trend continuation trading. Right. They are all the same. Right. If you're going to be a price action trader, if you're going to be a, a chartist, if you're going to be a technical analyst. Right. You're going to do analysis exactly the same. Again, I, I apologize. This is technical heavy. We don't have a chart. But if you've seen any of my live room episodes, if you've seen any of the videos I've done on YouTube, I always say something like this. I say I use a technique called think like the other trader and think like the other trader is a technique where I basically analyze the market and I make predictions. And whether I'm looking for a trend continuation trade, whether I'm looking for a counter trend trade, that analysis, those predictions are going to be exactly the same because regardless if I'm a trend trader or a counter trend trader, what I'm seeing on the chart doesn't change. The only thing that changes is how I decide to use that information. So a target for a potential trend trader, right? If I'm a trend trader or I plan on trend trading and I, and I, and I make a specific prediction of where I think price is going to go and that's going to be where I take my profit targets off. Well, that's also the same entry place for a counter trend trade, right? Because a counter trend trader is trying to trade the point where the trend is exhausted. The trend continuation trader is trying to get out of the market when the trend gets exhausted, right? Vice versa. If I'm a counter trend trader and I'm predicting, uh, predicting a period of relief or a pullback, I'm saying that, hey, price has held this level. It's most likely to retrace to this level right here. Well, that level right there is the level that I would be looking to take profits as a counter trend trader. That's the same level, right, where I think that relief, that pullback, that outside return will end. And I, I would be looking to hop on the next extension up if I was a trend continuation trader. So no matter how you look at it, the analysis is the same. The tools you use are the same. There is nothing special. 
the only difference is how, uh, you know, how you decide to act. Are you gonna act in the form of a continuation trader or are you gonna act in the form of a counter trend trader? So I apologize for this episode. A lot of wordy talking, technical jargon without the charts. It's always hard, I don't like doing them, but I told this trader I would respond in the form of a podcast. I am a man of my word, so I did so. But I'll tell you what, if you wanna get a hands-on look at how I trade, there are thousands of YouTube videos up that you can check out or you can head over to our website, www.tier1trading.com. You can take some training courses. You can join us in the live room. All of that comes part of your 14-day risk-free trial, meaning there's no auto bill or anything like that. You just get 14 days to hang out on the platform, take in all the goodness that we have to offer before you're booted out.